G'day and welcome back to my channel. Now the bounty has been going ahead in leaps and bounds. There's so much happening here. There is rigging for the tiller. The um, anchors are now on. There's just so much going on. And I've even started on the rat lines. And that's what I'm going to talk about in this video. In fact, I've shot so much footage. There's going to be another video fairly soon. I've done it again. It's going to be double feature. All right, well, let's get on with it. And I'll explain to you what's involved in preparing the dead eyes and doing the rat lines. And I'm going to discuss a couple of different methods. Now these are some rat lines I've made. Well, technically they're shrouds and rat lines. Um, people colloquially refer to these things as rat lines, but really the rat line is only the horizontal bit. That's just the rung. And that is usually done with a tan cord because it's part of the moving rigging, because basically the uh, sailors hop on it and, you know, basically they usually get bent down a bit. I haven't tried to do these yet, actually, but I was hoping that um, I could probably bend them down a bit, which I will. Probably going to be a lot easier to do that once they're all tensioned. Now, these were made on the um, the Ratline tool that um, comes out of an Airfix Heli kit, and I'll show you that and that technique shortly, because a lot of people are asking about that. Then I'll explain to you what's wrong with that and a much better way to do it. But anyhow, more of that later. Now, you'll notice here the rat line, well, the shrouds, actually, um, that come down. Okay, the black lines, tarred. Black cord's always tarred. It's usually fixed rigging. It doesn't move, right? It's designed to absolutely sit still. It's tight, tight. That's it. So stays and things like that and shrouds are all fixed rigging and they're black. They're tarred. But any of the rigging that moves, any of the rigging that's kind of pulling sails so they can move them and running things up and down, then that will be the tan colour. That will just be rope colour. There you go. If you didn't know, that's why there's two different colours. Anyhow, the um, shrouds come down and they attach to what's called dead eyes. And the dead eyes have some tanned line you'll see there. They actually have three strands of it. Now, that's actually the plastic part of the kit, and I've left it that way. I mean, I may get more adventurous if I had a larger scale. And um, I've got some 172nd and 50 and 40 scale ships. And in those, I might actually get the dead eyes and then thread the pulley um, rope in there. And even this part here is supposed to be rope as well. But I've left that as the kit had it. But the kit had also something I didn't like. And that is, the kit has this. There's a beam along here. Now that's done so you can shove on their rat lines. Now let me show you those. So here's the kit's rat lines. They're, um, you know, they're okay if you've, you've never really built a ship before and you think, oh, this is too daunting. But compare them to what I've made. It's chalk and cheese, you know. That's <laughs> so thick. And they're also all black, whereas mine are the correct colours. And they're much finer and they look good. Now, if you're building the kit, you simply attach, clunk, if you cut that bit off. That attaches to there and you're away. Your, um, your shrouds click on there and, and away you go. But you've got lots of black lines and, you know, it's, it's pretty horrible. But this part is not needed at all. And I have cut it away here. So that looks like it could be a kind of scary thing to do. So um, let me show you how easy it is to remove that little part. And then you can actually thread your shrouds to your dead eyes. So here we have the part. Now, I want to remove this top piece. And it's a lot easier to do it if you turn it over because up the other way, you've got these connecting tabs. I actually had to make those. The ones, uh, this kit's so badly molded. It actually was molded without any of those. Um, all the other parts had, to a certain degree, the little pins there, which go on the side of the hull to to locate the um, the whole uh, dead eye arrangement here. But um, mine didn't, not on this part. So um, luckily I had some um, cylindrical sprue there and I managed to work out the uh, the measurements and then trial fit it and glue it together and made my own. But anyhow, none of that. You're waffling on, Harry. Well, you did ask for more waffle. People have been asking for waffle. So there you go. So upside down is going to be the best way to handle this because otherwise, the other way, you'll probably break these tiny little things or you might even break those, which we don't want to do. Now, removing them is not too hard because you've got the back of the dead eye here, uh, although it's pretty badly moulded. I mean, there's no holes. Dead eyes have three little holes, but let me, maybe I can show you a pic, right? So why they're called dead eyes? Because they look like a face with two eyes and a mouth that's like, uh, you know, and it's like a dead person. That's, what, that's the whole thing. It's dead-eyed, you know. Yes, it's, um, it's quite a common term. It's not a pirate term. So you can use the edge of the dead-eye there as a way to cut. So 
and I'm going to cut diagonally away because I don't want to wreck that. So if I cut diagonally away, I'm not going to wreck the dead eye. I'm simply going to remove that top beam, which I don't need and I don't want. Okay, so there we go. Easy as that. All right, now that's left me with a little bit of rubbish on the top there, but that's fine. That's fine. Now I can turn it over because the beam's not in the way, and actually it sits a lot easier now because the beam actually pushed up a bit higher. And now I can get in there if you can see what I can see, and using the dead eye as a former, I can carefully, with a nice sharp knife, cut away the bits that I don't need. So I hope you can, I'm trying to do it so you can see it, but it's really not that hard. Now you never cut, if you're doing something that's round, you never cut straight across. You cut at angles and you work your way to the apex. Okay, so you notice I'm cutting at 45 degrees, holding my part as clean as I can as firmly as I can. I'm probably blocking the camera the whole time I'm doing it. So I'm going to hold that part firmly but gently. And that's got most of it removed. Most of it. Okay. And then returning to the other side, you can also remove any of the extra extra there. And again, you use your dead eye pulley as a former because you rest your blade against it. Okay, slowly whittling away. Anything like this where you've got to do major surgery, do it a little at a time. Because if you do a big cut and you cut a big chunk off, you'll go, oh shit, I have rooted it. Whereas it's always better to be less, you know, not have cut enough off. So there we go. So that's a riveting bloody video, Harry. Yes, I know. Okay, so they're off. And all I've got to do now um, to, to finish this job off is give them a light sand. Now, they will be fraggle, <laughs> fragile, okay? So best to hold them, and then usually I would do a, a round movement like that, but if there's nowhere to move, I can probably do the ends, right? And I can probably come in at an angle, which is the way to do it. But then the ones in here I can't really get in, so I'm going to have to do the old shuffle around trick. But you don't have to worry too much because you're going to have a cord there. Which is going to hide a bit. And um, it, there's not much plastic, so it doesn't take much to round them. Okay, so we now have the dead eyes exposed, but we're not finished. What I want to do now is I want to be able to put some holes in them so I can actually thread the shrouds through, which will make it really easy to attach my rat lines. Now, strictly speaking, this is wrong, 100% wrong. Um, if we have a look at the pulley photo again, the shroud technically comes down and goes around the outside of this dead eye pulley. The inside three holes are really just for these three cables. But trying to run a tiny piece of 0.15 cotton around the outside of that, well, good luck. <laughs> if you can do it, brilliant. I can't. I'm cheating because basically um, this will still look okay. I'm going to drill a tiny little hole. Now, how do I do that without going insane? <laughs> okay, this is what we do. All right, so in the middle of our dead eye, I'm going to, from on there, I'm going to find the center. And I'm going to just do a little tap. Now this is my little scribing come marking tool. And I'll have a look, is that right? Actually, I've got it first go. Yeah, um, if it was slightly to one side or the other, then you could sort of worry it over a little bit. You could just do a bit of a, so be very careful cutting into your cutting mat because you really, you know, don't want to put big holes in it. So what I've got here is a nice block of wood. So with that nice block of wood, I can now get exactly at the right angle, drill away, well, it's pin vice, pin vice away, and um, you'll feel it when it goes through. This is a 0.5 millimetre bit. Running off screen there. Okay. So easy as that. And then I've got my trusty toothbrush, because I always like good dental hygiene while I'm building a model. <laughs> no. And the other trick I do is I come back to my, well, my corner of the cob holder, where it's basically like my little punch, and I just worry that hole a bit. 
Now, if you've done it right, and if I've done this right, the hole should be exactly on the pointy bit there of that, um, that bit of rope. And that is the top, one of the top holes. Okay, so the ones at the bottom actually look like real dead eyes. They'll have two eyes at the top and the mouth and the bottom. These will look like upside down, but anyhow, they're still called dead eyes. They have that kind of look. So if you've done it right, that's there. And then with the cotton, I won't attempt to thread it on camera here, but um, your, uh, your cotton will then thread in and through that hole, which you'll see shortly makes it a lot easier to tension your shrouds. And then by the time it's glued and it's painted up, because I'll, um, I'll, I'll go over these and paint them, um, where I've cut them off, I'll repaint them again. Now I have made them black, okay? They're actually painted a very, very dark grey. I think the grey is called anthracite. It's a very, very dark grey. It's just a shade off black. And I tend to use that for things like tyres and what have you and, and anything that, that um, is black in scale because at distance, black isn't solid black. I mean, it might be black up close, but with distance, it kind of greys it a little bit. Plus, if you, if you paint it slightly lighter than black, you can run a black wash on it and get some relief in the crevices. All right, I'll um, continue on. I'll draw all the rest of these holes and then I'll show you how to do some rigging. All right, at the moment, you've no doubt been waiting for because this is the thing that's been requested and spoken about the most on uh, Facebook and some of the other chats that I've had. How do you make these bloody rat lines, okay? How do you use this cavangled tool? Okay. Now, there's many ways to make them. You can put pegs on a board, you can do that. There's various sort of looms you can do that make butterfly pairs. Um, they all work. This is the Heller tool, or now it's basically also in the Airfix kits, um, since they acquired basically the moulds from Heller for a lot of the big ships. Now, it's very versatile. It um, slides up and it does all kinds of things, and you actually end up making a pair. You've got a pair on that side. Well, a set on that side, a set on that side. So a matching pair. So when you cut them off, you get a butterfly. Okay? So um, if, I, if I was to cut those along there, these would peel off and I'd have a butterfly of um, a pair of rat lines. But what I'll do is I'll get another clean one of these tools and I'll show you how you use them because I must say the instructions on the Airfix kit when I was trying to figure out how these worked, well, it, it completely stupefied me and I do understand things about rat lines and I understand rigging and it, it took me a while to figure it out. Let me demystify that and show you how easy this is. So here's a nice clean one. Nothing be done it now. It has a lot of measurements on it. It has um, two and a half millimeter gaps, saw teeth down that side and this side, um, and then uh, this way it has two millimeter gaps. Okay, and this one's strictly. Oh, it'll do from about seventy second, seventy fifth scale, probably up to you know one fifty. Might even do a two hundred. Now. Usually in the kits, it will give you everything. It'll tell you which channel to use. It'll tell you basically your spacing, the way you go. If you're doing it yourself and um, you're just trying to match it to what you've got, well, what you're going to have to do is, if you've luckily got the plastic ones in the kit, you can have a look and go, oh, okay, I want to make one of these. And you usually start on uh, this one. And you go, okay, well, that's what I need to do. And you could actually work it out, right? So you could actually then go, okay, I'm going to need to start there, go there and so on. So you calculate that all out and you might need to write that down. So you'll, you'll need to have this line running at 25 and this one here running at um, 22 and what's that 14 and 7 and then you're probably running at 3. So you write those numbers down and you go well that's where that's got to run to because that's coming out of the channel there. Okay that's assuming this runs to a point. All right, which it pretty well does. And then you're then going to have to work out your horizontal. Now, unfortunately, on this, your horizontal, well, you probably do every third one. Um, one, two, no, one, two, every second one, sorry, every second one. We'll do every second one, okay? Um, I actually did it slightly differently on mine because I calculated what they should be and did mine correctly to scale on my model. But, sorry, um, this is all you need to do. Now, you can work the tool this way as well. But something as big as this, it's hardly going to fit. Well, it will, but it won't leave you much thread. So then you'll find it very difficult to tie it off to your dead eyes and tie it up to your mast. That's a real problem. You really want that full length. You want it to go to the point, and then you want a lot of thread down here, which you can tie into pulleys and things. Okay. So let's um, we'll just kind of wing it, and um, I'll just do one. 
for you, I'm going to use oversized thread so it shows up for the video because if, if I use the correct size thread, it's virtually impossible to see. So the first thing you do is, well, you read your instructions, it tells you the channel, right? And then it tells you your numbers. If not, you do what I do and um, you have to calculate out what your points are. So can you remember what those numbers were? I can't. I'm just going to guess it. I'm going to wing it because I'm just doing this for you. Oh, this, it's been cotton, cotton, cotton for days. Now, you have these little tie holes. They're all over this thing. Oh, quite a lot of them. You can also extend this. I'll show you that. Right, it doesn't have to be this length. You have got a whole lot of settings. Right, and you can pop it apart. Let's see what we do this without buggering the proceedings. So it pops apart. What am I on C, I think? It's um, quite stiff, which is good, which means when it's set up to rig, it's not going to come apart and your loom is not going to fall like a lot of granny's knitting all over the bloody floor. Right. So you have got a series of settings here, A, B, C, D, U. Right? So you can actually go as big as that and then you can tighten it up and go as small as that, depending on what you're doing. I was on setting C from memory. Oh, can I see what I'm doing? C, yeah. So I, I wanted basically C. Alright, so as you can see, it clicks in very firmly. Okay, so setting C gives me what I want. Because that gave me the length that I needed. Because by changing the length, it'll change how you use the grooves. Because obviously you're triangling out. So if you put your rule up, if, you, if you're doing your own, you put your rule up and go, the grooves don't really match. Well, you could try a slightly wider setting or a slightly narrower setting, and that will change the positioning of the grooves relative to the triangle that you're making. It's it's all trigonometry. Don't worry. All right. So you start off by finding a hole close by to the channel that you want to use. So if you're using this channel, use that hole. Now, it's best to have the hole away from where the top part is. And I'll explain why in a sec. It'll become quite obvious. You really need to have tied it somewhere else because when you cut your tie away you don't want to bug out your red line. So it's just through there and you tie it off to start your looming. Now you can put the red lines on first and then the shrouds or then the shrouds and the red lines. Either way will work to varying degrees but we'll, seeing as I've started doing the shrouds, we'll do it that way. So with that tied off, you then run through the channel and you run down to whatever you thought, I think it was the third one, and then back up again, okay? Did you follow that? Do I need to do that again? All right, so you basically start in the channel, through the channel, over, under, over, and in whatever number that you made a note of was in your instructions, okay, so I'll go there, there's an all position, up you go. And then you come down for your next one. So my next one was there, Oh, I'm just guessing. And then my next one's here. And my next one's a bit further along there. Okay. And then I've got another one there. And that is my pretend layout. It's probably nothing like the one I want. But I'm just showing you. Okay. Then when you've got to the end, you need to tie that off. All right. So you would now cut this and you would tie it. Um, it would tie it to the, um, the side here. Okay, so I'm just going to run it through here. I'd rather not cut my thread. Oh, I can, I can. I can afford it. Yeah, I can afford to waste it for you. Yes, you're waste worthy. Is that like Seinfeld? Sponge worthy. <laughs> How did you see that episode? Do you know what I'm talking about? You're probably disgusted if you are. Hmm. So you tie that off, right? And so all you've made is a whole lot of loops. I keep bumping my rule. I really shouldn't have had it on the workbench here because it makes an almighty racket every time I bump it through. I am so sick of doing knots. I've been knotting and tying and rigging and messing around, as you can see. Um, I can't even do this. It's too late in the day, I don't care. But I want to get this video done for you. See the things I go through just to produce this YouTube channel? Alright, okay. That'll do. So that's created your shrouds. Okay, so those are your vertical lines. 
And at this point, you can even adjust them because you go, oh no, that one's just slightly wrong, and you know, and oh dear, that should have been over there a bit. You 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 basically play around with it to you get it how you want, and make sure that they're not overlapping incorrectly because they should basically all come to a point. So your first one should be should be over on this side. So you you do all that fine tuning now. So you go, oh no, that one should be right over here. What's it doing over there? That's better. That's it. Checking that side. Yes, they're all correct. Because you want them in order. They need to be in order and they need to come to a point. Okay. So once you've got all that done, you're right. And probably they should be at that part of the tool. That's it. So now they're all lined up. Uh, I don't know if that'll show on camera. Okay. They, are, they should all be lined up. Nothing's overlapping. All right. And that's exactly what you want. All right, it's probably burning out, burning out everything. Going crazy to Harry, didn't he? Now, now you do your rat lines. So now you do your rat lines in earnest. So you only need to do them where you need them. So I'm just going to do a short section from there to there. Okay, from from there to there. I don't need to do them all the way to the bottom. In fact, I want to leave a lot of space there at the bottom. All right, shrouds are done. Now we need to do the rat lines. Okay, now. Working from the side furthest away, where you've got the most amount of space, because you're going to need that. You're going to need that for shoving cotton reels through. And I've already managed to stab myself. Look at this. Things I do for this video. So working from the furthest away part, you um, thread your rat line, which will be the tan thread, into a locating hole down here to anchor the whole thing. So through that goes. And um, just tie that off securely. You don't think you're a rebel. So you come down to your first point, and you've got a little grid here, and I'm going to read on that. I'll start on basically 32. So running it through to 32, I then find 32 on this side, and it's perfectly horizontal. Now I need to go to my next one, and this is why you want the big holes on this side, because you want to run this round and through. Black cotton's getting in the way. So dragging this around, I want two spaces. So if that was 32, I want to go to um, 30. Actually, I did it on 33. 31 I need now. All right. And so there's my next run. And all I do is I keep going. Okay. Now, the reason I'm looping here is you, these two must be parallel. But then when you go to that one, you've got to go diagonally. Right? There's a little diagonal line there. You've got to go diagonally across your next one. If you're trying to do it over here, you've got nowhere to stick your, um, your cotton reel through. It becomes a real nightmare. So it's much easier to do it on this side. So again, we go two, run it through, go two. And I mean, you can eyeball the thing as you're going because it's got to be level. Okay, It's always got to be level. Keep it tight. You don't want this thing to go loose because you need the tightness for the tension here, right? Because at the moment, those shrouds and those rat lines are touching. In fact, it's it does work a little better if you put the um, if you put the rat lines on first. I don't know, it's Arthur Martha. It, um, it works both ways. All right, so again, I go through here, I pull tight, and then I move two along, because my spacing is two notches. So basically, once I have the first one, I don't even care about the numbers. I just know I've got to move two notches every time. So two notches. Um, should be that one, yep, nice and tight, through, and away I go, okay, so you, you can uh, go make a cup of tea now, there's no point in watching me do the rest of this. And there we go. And for those of you that have been watching very closely, uh, you may notice I'm actually skew. <laughs> but I was consistent. Yeah, I, um, I did go over one. And in that case, it wouldn't be that much of a problem. Um, and I suddenly realised, ah, oh, I, mean, I mean, either I could say, well, at least I'm consistent all the way through. Um, there's one that's slightly out, actually. You can fix things too. It's like, see, that one's not sitting correctly. So there you go. That's it. You can, you can fix mistakes because I had one threaded wrong, but you would basically weave all this off now <laughs> and thread it again because it's no trouble. You're, still, you're only tired there. Everything else is just held in by friction. 
So that is a complete rat line assembly, and um, that's how they would look. So that would give you both sides, and all you would do to finish off now is you would tie, and then you need to glue. So what you would do, they recommend, is you just rub glue all over that. It'd be white wood glue is what you want to use. I probably wouldn't use um, kit glue, you know, plastic glue. So you, you basically paint on a, a, a wick, uh, mixture, say half water, half white PVA wood glue on there and leave it to set. And the, basically you should have drained into all the joints. What I did though was I got a um, I got a toothpick and I went round, imagine this is the toothpick, okay, and I went tap, 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 tap on every joint and I put a dollop of white wood glue, a little photo here. And that was to simulate knots because they're actually knotted they should be knotted you could if you wanted to instead of um instead of just leaving this thing like this as they run through tie the knot tie the knot tie the knot tie the knot pull the thing straight so they all line up you could knot them on here as well okay so once that's done you um basically let the glue dry however you've glued it and then the only point you cut is you cut the starter here for the shrouds you only cut that you cut your rat line starter and end, okay, to release those. Then you cut the bottom here of the shrouds so that you end up with this nice loose bit of um, cord here which you can use to thread and tie with. You don't cut those because you want those because they will actually go over the top and thread through and on your model. There are instances where that won't work and I'll explain all that later. And then you, you also need to cut all of these, the end of where your rat lines are. Now, the order is cut these first, all right? Cut these little joins here very carefully. You get in with your um, with your clippers, which seems to be the best way for me. Oh, bloody, there's black cord over here. Every time I reach over, the bloody thing tangles. It loves me. So you you go in here with your um, clippers and you would go cut, 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 nice and close. You find this thing is um, it almost feels like um, uh, a fly screen. It's really tight and it's quite firm, and all the little joints add up to being quite a, a strong sort of um, a strong mesh. So cut those first because if you don't cut those first, if you cut all the others, and when it's off and it's floppy, it's really hard to get in there and cut close without accidentally cutting your shroud. So while it's nice and tight, cut, 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 cut. Right, get your outsides cut on both sides, okay, and then cut away your securing anchors, and then you can cut away the bottom here. And then when you cut them off that, um, that little Hella Airfix jig, you end up with a butterfly like this. I'll just put those two together to give you an idea. Now, the problem is that to get them on the kit, <laughs> you'll need to cut them in half, which is um, a bit of worry. Not all the places. There's some spots like the upper um, parts of the mask where you can wrap the butterfly on and it'll actually fit on nicely. Or if you manage to somehow put your uh, rigging on before you paint and assemble your mask, you can do it. But like me, if you've already built, painted the mask, they're all up and you just want to put your rigging in, uh-oh, you've got a problem because when these are joined together, there's no way you can get this through the tiny little gap. Anyway, I'll explain more about that in the next video and I'm going to show you this. It's a little tool I made that makes the whole process so much easier and so much faster. But more of that next time because this video has already run on long enough. So it's goodbye from Australia and it's Huru from Harry Houdini.